Interesting tweet here from Christopher, who says, you are missing a piece of the protect the NHS argument. Staffing levels. How many doctors and nurses are currently self-isolating for 14 days after being found positive by a test with issues over false positive rates? Again, it comes down to policy. And that is a very, very good point, because the whole process of which we are now suffering and under the yoke of which we are now uh, having businesses closed down, is based upon all of these testing results, all of these so-called um, hospitalizations, all of these supposedly busy COVID wards. And quite frankly, I'm not buying it anymore. Let's talk to Richard Tice, chairman of the Reform UK party, businessman, of course, a man uh, who has been thoroughly against this lockdown policy since the beginning. Richard, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mike. How are you doing? Yeah, very well indeed. I mean, it's a lot of anger in the country this morning, Richard. I mean, we picked up a bit of it yesterday afternoon. Uh, but as more and more people have realised that, you know, um, the government is literally standing on the head of a pin and not realising it's about to burst the balloon and they're all going to fall into the water. I don't know why I'm using a kind of it's a knockout analogy, but that's how it feels. You know, they don't seem to realise that nobody's believing a word of it. It's it, it quite unbelievable. I mean, it really is. I am absolutely steaming from every sinew of my body with, with frustration, with incandescent anger at what this government is doing to this country. They're not running the country. They no. are literally ruining the country. Mm. And, you know, I had a nervousness that the government would do this, that they would uh, basically keep us in lockdown, but pretend it was called something else. Um, and, and, yeah, essentially, they've moved almost the whole country upwards into a tighter level of lockdown uh, than was previously the case under the previous tiers. You know, as far as we're concerned at Reform UK, the whole country should either be in tier zero or tier one. Mm. And the proof of the pudding, uh, Mike, is the data. And it's always good to focus on the data. The government doesn't seem very good on that. Um, look at the data coming out of Liverpool. And as Julie was, uh, was highlighting earlier, mm when she completely skewered uh, the Housing Secretary, Robert Jenrick. Um, the Liverpool cases data started to fall in October. And then when Liverpool started testing with the new rapid lateral flow test on the 6th of November, over the next two weeks, uh, the, the, the cases there plummeted per 100,000 by over 50%. And you know, what that's actually showing is that I think the whole country is being misled based on false data from these, the, the government standard PCR tests, where I think there's huge contamination in the laboratories where they're processed, um, and the new lateral flow test is, is producing results, just one fifth of the positives, just mm. one in five of the positives that you are seeing from the government's PCR test in the same community in Liverpool. So you've got a direct comparison there using two different types of tests, and what it's showing is that the government standard test they're using all over the country, I think is wholly inaccurate can't be trusted and all of what's going on is based on dodgy false incorrect data and the question is and we need to establish this soon and i'm working hard on this the question is who in government truly knows what is going on do they, do they know at this and they're covering it up or are they so incompetent so negligent but they just don't know it. Yeah, I think it's an extremely important question. And it's one of the many questions that have never been answered throughout this whole situation, because we've now got, you know, evidence to suggest that um, you know, there are loads of people doing business with the government, um, which I have no objection to people doing business with the government at all. Uh, but th they don't seem to know what they're doing either. You know, the idea that uh, I mean, you're a businessman, the idea that Boris Johnson gets up and says, well, look, we had to pay through the nose for all this stuff back in March, because we didn't know how much of it we would need. I mean, can you imagine employing a manager in a business that you were running who said to you look I'm terribly sorry I bankrupted your business but you know I had to get this stuff in because you told me to and so I just gave this guy whatever money he asked for I mean hello this, the, the place is so inefficient that I'm, I'm I, I mean I can believe that they are that inefficient and that useless I, I think you know the, the truth will out about the, the the cronyism you know basically if you were a mate of an MP or a minister you had a much much higher chance of getting a contract uh, for supplying PPE, even if you'd never supplied a single uh, item of PPE ever before in mm -hmm. your life, even if you didn't know how to spell the word, let mm -hmm. alone the specification of the stuff. Um, so I think the cronyism and potential corruption uh, has been huge. And I think the incompetence of the civil service has been highlighted because, you know, it turns out, you know, what they should have done is they should have, they should have put in some, some maximum profit margins. They should have put in some some penalty clauses, some performance clauses, some proper metrics. 
They haven't done any of that. And of course, the biggest contract of all, we understand where they haven't done that, is the test and trace contract with Serco, multi-billion pounds, um, a complete failure. And instead of changing it or firing them or, or moving the test and trace system locally into the public health authorities that many people have been calling for, no, 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 they just extend the cost by another 10 billion from 12 billion to 22. So, you know, if it's not working, don't, um, you know, don't try and sort it out. No, no, just, just throw more money at the problem. I mean, it's utterly incompetent and a disgraceful way to look after taxpayers' cash, our hard-earned, our hard-earned money, money. Yeah, and the thing I find even more extraordinary was after that ridiculous press conference yesterday, or during it, um, when people like Laura Kunzberg asked questions. They don't ask questions based upon the fact that what they've just been told could be complete rubbish. They base it on the fact that what they've just been told is all true. And they start asking these ludicrous questions like, well, you know, how important will it be for the people in Tier 2 to do what you've asked them to do in order not to go into Tier 3? And it's like this sort of mass... Um, buy-in that some people in this country are doing, but I think the numbers of people like you and I who are not get buying it are getting bigger. Yeah, I think they are. There's no question. You know, you can just look from social media um, that the frustration, the anger is growing. And I, I guess really the question is, at what point uh, do some of us say, do you know what, we're done. Enough is enough. We're going to organise some form of, of huge, huge uh, show uh, to the government that um, we're not going to put up with this anymore. And, um, you know, all ideas gratefully received, but really and truly, you know, we should just not allow our country uh, to be ruined, to be destroyed, tens of thousands of businesses um, going to the wall, millions of jobs uh, disappearing, our young people being locked up in universities, suicide soaring. I mean, it's just, it, it's utterly mind-boggling. And, and the sooner that we can force... Uh, force change um, and have a real show of, of discontent, the better. I mean, I wonder whether the May elections are going to provide that for you, Richard. I know that you guys are working on um, putting candidates up for Reform UK. I mean, could the May elections end up becoming a kind of referendum on this government? Well, I, I certainly hope they will. That's assuming they go ahead. Um, believe it or not, Mike. Well, actually, um, but they'll probably can if they think they're going to get defeated massively, they'll probably cancel them, right? Seriously, don't joke, Mike. Um, there is a bill in the Scottish Parliament giving the, to give the Scottish ministers the unique discretion at their own uh, discretion um, to delay the elections up there. I'm told there's a bill similarly uh, going to the Welsh Assembly. Um, so, you know, the May elections, uh, they, they must take place, in my view, no question at all. And, yeah, we're very focused on that. We've got lots and lots of people applying across the board. Um, I hope many of your listeners, you know, if they feel energised, um, you know, go to our website, please apply. That is the first, uh, you know, demonstration at the ballot box where people can show their discontent, not only with this Conservative government, but with the supine, sheep-like Labour Party uh, that just follows mm. on uh, behind um, and says, oh, you know, actually, maybe you should lock down a bit further. Maybe we should put a few more hundred thousand people out of their jobs. Maybe we should just draw a few more thousand businesses. Um, all the while completely ignoring the context, which is that actually 99.5% of people who catch this virus survive it, um, and notwithstanding that actually since June, there are hardly any excess deaths in the UK at all. It's within the margin of error. I think mm. it's sort of around the sort of 2 or 3%. It's all about the context. And, and the other important thing to remember is, you know, yes, this is a dangerous virus for a tiny minority of people. And yes, people are sadly dying. It's the only certainty in life. But the reality, also it's true that there are hundreds less respiratory cases in hospital every single day, every week. Why? Because they're being allocated as COVID cases. So there's an offset there. And I think, you know, the data is completely misleading people. Mm because of the false data of these uh, these PCR tests. Well, I think the only thing we can be certain of is that there is no piece of data being used by the government which is actually quantifiable. We don't think... I mean, Ian Duncan Smith himself, a former leader of the Tory party, said that he does not believe that any of the data currently being quoted by the government has been properly tested and properly kind of, you know, um, stress-tested, if you like, because even the, even the death figures that we get... Uh, are people who have had a corona test within the last 28 days. There is no guarantee that all of those people died of coronavirus. Yeah, it, 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 it is so disappointing. It's so it, it, it's hard to know what to believe. Um, <clears throat> I'm very focused on these PTR, PCR tests um, and, and all the suggestions that hospitals are being overrun, 
um, just simply are not borne out by the data coming out of the NHS. When you look at uh, the number of bed spaces, be they be admitted, be they be in um, uh, ICU departments, you know, they are in line with normal five-year averages for this time of the year, because guess what, folks? We're going into winter. You know, there's always um, some form of, of winter crisis that the media always, uh, you know, bang on about mm. in the NHS. Well, every year we um, get the same story. time of the year. Every, every year I mean, we get the same we, story, yeah. and it's, it's happening again now, and they're using it as an excuse. And it's just, it's, it's just disgraceful, and it's mm. destroying the country. Exactly right. And finally, uh, Richard, tell us what the Portuguese courts have said about these PCR tests. So this is really important, actually, uh, that um, uh, I believe it was four people who had been asked to quarantine uh, in Portugal because of the PCR test data. They actually took the government to court and they won. The Portuguese courts found that the PCR test was unreliable uh, in the way that they were carrying them out, just based on laboratories, um, because it had no separate assessment from a doctor or physician about the symptoms of the individual uh, person receiving the test. So this is really important. If we've got courts in Portugal, you know, part of the European Union, highly respected country, uh, highly respected health service, we've got courts in Portugal saying that actually the PCR test is unreliable, then um, you know, maybe we should be looking again. Interestingly, Mike, um, countries like Norway, where you've got very few COVID cases, there's a reason for that. That is that every time they get a positive PCR test, guess what they do? They double check it mm. with a second test. And of course, therefore, the numbers come plummeting down. So what I would be urging is that in this country, we should stop using the PCR test full stop. If the government can't um, own up to admitting its cock ups, then tell you what, well, folks, let's double check every single positive with a lateral flow test. And I think you'll find the numbers plummet. And then I think you'll find that people will be calling for heads to roll at the top of government and at the top of SAGE. Indeed they will. Richard Tice, thank you very much indeed for your time. Chairman of Reform UK, businessman, of course. The, the, the election's coming up in May, as I said, could well become a referendum uh, on this government and the way that this government has operated over the course uh, of this whole coronavirus. Let's not forget, you know, it wasn't the government's fault that coronavirus came to this country. It wasn't the government's fault that people started dying uh, from an unknown, previously unknown virus that came from China. However... It is now time to take stock of what is going on. It is now time to take stock of what they've done. We all went along with it for very, very much of the first part of this year. Uh, certainly here at Talk Radio and in my own personal case, I had faith in what Boris Johnson and the government were doing. Uh, I took notice of the first lockdown. I think now uh, people are starting to get very angry, particularly those who are being restricted from making any money, those who are being restricted from seeing their family, those who are being restricted by law from going anywhere and doing anything. We've had enough, I think, is the message coming to the government. It's pretty soon they'd better start picking it up. 